What's up traders, Matt from the Trade Brigade here doing a technical analysis on our Fangman stocks that of course stands for Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and NVIDIA. As always, on the left-hand side, we do have the daily time frame chart, and on the right-hand side, the 30-minute intraday time frame chart. Lo and behold, it's the day of reckoning. We finally got a little bit of significant pullback in our, you know, Fangman stocks, to be quite frank, and the broad market indexes. Definitely check out that video if you haven't. Uh, regardless, most of this selling happened in the last 30-minute session of today's uh, trading window. So be aware that a lot of this has not had enough time, aka the market just closed, the natural uh, activity of the marketplace was literally shut off there wasn't enough time to determine whether or not these lower prices are fair. In market profile lingo, we refer to that as a spike. So we'll be talking about and referencing the term spike uh, a lot throughout the course of today's video. And what I mean by that is the last 30 minute session, which produced a large move to the downside on Facebook. If we zoom in here, this is your spike. Okay, so it's basically anything underneath the you know prior lows of the day that only traded for one 30 minute period, right? These prices only had that last 30 minute period to trade and then the market closed. And obviously we don't know whether or not those prices are fair. Do we need to auction lower to continue to find buyers? Are we gonna open inside and look for more balance? Or will we open above and negate all of this selling activity in which case that's the most bullish outcome. So that's the uh, basis of the spike reference that we're gonna continue to make throughout the course of today's video. However, let's rewind just a little bit before we talk about the possible outcomes here and just look at our daily time frame chart. Very, very simple, right? We are still still very much so in an uptrend. We're still very much so above this 217 breakout point. We've filled the gap. That's a healthy thing from a structural perspective. That structure has been repaired, right? So is there anything overly alarming about this chart? Absolutely not. It's the first day of significant pullback. We've been up screaming to the upside for the past couple of weeks. This is warranted. This is merited. This is actually welcomed at this point in time to continue to give us risk-friendly entries, right? So what I would watch for on our Facebook daily time frame, let's remove this gap drawing uh, that's no longer in play, obviously, is does the support trend line offer some sort of support for a higher low? something that keeps us well above that 217. And can we reattempt the poor high double top essentially up here around 231? That could be a possibility. If we break the support trend line, what happens at 217 is the next question. Do we get some sort of break, retest, and then go? So be on the lookout for any hammer candles that print down here, any sort of indecision dojis, things that would basically make you question the strength of the sellers. Are we going to support at prior resistance? Can we flip long over the highs and then retarget the top end? And again, that poor high here on the daily, closer to 231. That's how I'm thinking about Facebook into the remainder of the week. Obviously, we only have one day of the Friday session, but even into early next week, how does this pull back resolve is the question that should be on many people's minds. And don't forget that this reversal is still very much intact. There's nothing bearish about the chart currently, uh, you know, in, in terms of this short term reversal, at least. I mean, obviously, don't, you know, don't make me do it. If I have to do this to the chart, yes, obviously, we're making some pretty significant downward progress. But if this is going to be a sharper reversal and strong inflection point down here for a move back higher, again, things are fine as long as we're above 217 inside of Facebook. So that's your daily perspective. Again, we're our way over to the 30 minute now to talk about that spike. I want to give you the numbers. So here it is 223.75. If we're below 223.75, look for two sided trade if we open in the spike. If we open underneath today's low of day, it's an even more bearish implication. Again, the market's trying to find new buyers. We should probably move lower, right? 217 could be coming into play for that break and retest, something that does this. And if we open above the spike or back above the support trend line, anywhere above 223.76, all of the sellers late to today's close, hopping on, piling on the train, thinking that it's just got to be lower, those people will be proved wrong. So an open up here should lead to higher prices. The market remains intact to the upside. Start thinking about this as potentially bull flag consolidation. And then over the course of time, repairing that 231 structure. So that's what we've got in Facebook. Next up, we've got infamous Apple, AAPL, finally experiencing some pullback as well. Remember in the, uh, well, technically we covered it over on the main channel yesterday. We didn't do a video on this channel, but on the main channel, we were talking about yesterday, the fact that we saw one, the first red day, but two, a break of our support trend line sideways through time, instead of continuing to hold that, uh, you know, as we had been doing for quite some time, literally from the bottom, there's your anchor, touch number one, two, 
three, so on and so forth. We're riding up that trend line, right? We finally went through it sideways through time. And on today's session, we did see a little bit more significant pullback. Obviously, the gap has filled as well. So we're going, oops, we don't want to clear the whole set. That would be a travesty. We just want to get rid of a couple of drawings here. The gap's no longer in play, obviously. Uh, but however, so something interesting here inside of Apple is the fact that the gap, the gap close rather, is also the uh, base of the spike, right? So here's your spike activity inside of Apple. If we open here, obviously, you now you're looking for two-sided trade. If we open above, that's more of a bullish indication, possibly higher after that. And if we open below, start looking for that 172.65 coming from the daily in here, prior high, then offered support for a beautiful break and retest. You can see that right here. There's your break retest holds and goes, right? So prior resistance flipping into support in this general area. That's the first downside target. Anything lower than that, I would really start looking at 167. And as we've discussed on the main channel yesterday, that's going to be my line in the sand for pullbacks into this upcoming week. I would want to see it support around 167 and the 50 estimate providing a super support. So if for some reason the selling pressure does take us there, doesn't look likely, but if that happens, I would certainly be on the lookout for any type of hammer candles that print, any sort of indecision dojis, things that make you question the strength of the sellers at that particular level. Is this a reasonable pullback? Yes, it would be long over the highs, looking for an equal high reattempt over the course of time. Okay. So those are your Apple levels. If it is going to move higher, I would just start targeting the cluster of upper wicks in here, closer to 179. We know after that, it's all-time highs, just a hop, skip, and a jump away, okay? So that's what we've got inside of Apple. Someone also brought up the fact that this could be a head and shoulders pattern like that. Yeah, that's fine. So if you can get back above this, I would just call it this at this point in time, 177. Uh, if you can get back above that, kind of undoes that head and shoulders, and maybe it's back up towards those wicks that we just discussed. Again, with the close as it currently sits, not really my first thought, right? But something to at least keep in mind. So let's continue along. F-A-N for N-F-L-X. Netflix is up next. What do we have in the Netflix chart? This one, as I'm zooming in on the daily, I could actually see this as it was zoomed out, but there's possibility that this turns into an inverted head and shoulders, right? Your neckline would technically be here around 397. We're getting a pullback. We're building out this right side shoulder. If over the course of time, this turns back up and then moves through, that to me would be a significant bottoming pattern here inside of Netflix. Maybe it's higher after that. A longer term th uh, thought, no doubt about it. So don't get me wrong. That's not a primary objective into Friday's session. Just something I wanted to point out. Instead, in the short term, Definitely, here's our bull flag. We discussed on the live stream this morning the fact that, you know, any acceptance back down underneath the top of the flag, 382.75, is a look above and fail on our daily time frame. We brought this up in the midweek market video yesterday as well on the main channel. Very similar to NVIDIA, right? Target should be the bottom end of the range here at roughly 370. We'll call it for round number's sake. Again, this one doesn't have as clean of a spike, but we're accepting firmly back down with a bear flag on the 30 minute from this daily flag, right? We're, ex we're accepting into this range here. So that does carry some fairly bear implications with the look above and fail. Again, the target is always the bottom end. So 370 could be achieved. Looks like a pretty uh, bearish close here. Again, not really a spike, noting we did not make new lows. We technically traded inside today's range into the last 30 minute bar. So there's no spike to contend with here. But if we do continue to see price acceptance underneath 375.35, I would just look for the bottom of the range. Again, 370 as your likely target. To the upside, not overly interested in Netflix until we can take out once again this level here at 382.75. Could there be a scalp up above here for that. Yeah, but at this point in time, the bearish implications of the look above and fail would probably have me a little bit more hesitant. I would want to see that acceptance back higher before leaning on longs again inside of Netflix. So it's either a patience play or possibly short into the uh, end of the week here for something that does that. So that's N for Netflix, F-A-N-G-G-O-O-G-L for Google. Uh, in the Fang Man lineup. What do we see here? A nice significant pullback as well, giving us that spike into the afternoon session. Let's zoom in on the 30 minutes just so we can get our spike levels intact here. Uh, we're going to remove this drawing. That was uh, two-day lows, but we've obviously smashed that with the spike. So here we go. Spike exists underneath 2806. If we open underneath or inside of the range here, look for two-sided trade. If we open above, that negates the spike. Again, those sellers are wrong. We should move higher after that in that type of scenario up into the resistance from here on our daily that's 28, uh, 49, uh, 28, 50. If you just want to round off for nice, easy numbers, if we open below the spike, you're targeting this area from in here. So prior resistance, which did offer some support. This two day low is not too important. Obviously the spike traded through it. So instead, again, opening below, you should start to look for 2760 inside of your Google. It's roughly the daily 200 SMA as well. So that could that be a super support? Absolutely. I wouldn't really push your luck to the downside after that. Uh, unless there's a clear break and retest, right? It would need more confirmation to the downside if it's going to be a short. So here, fine, bear flag, 
break retest. Once we confirm that this is not acting as support anymore, maybe it's a more aggressive short. But again, uh, something like this could certainly happen if this is truly just liquidation break into the close. Only the short-term buyers with poor trade location up here realizing, hey, we're not getting paid anymore. We're going to close out of the position, which led to the spike in the first place, okay? So those are my Google levels into tomorrow's session, F-A-N-G-M for Microsoft, M-S-F-T. What do we see in Microsoft? Same sort of deal. I know I sound like a broken record, but all of these stocks generally follow the same sort of patterns, right? It's just a matter of knowing what the numbers are and what to look out for. On Microsoft, we did take out and make a new significant lower low considering we took out two prior days lows, right? So the target here, if this spike continues lower, it's going to be this breakout point around 305. We had beautiful consolidation. You can see that on the 30 minute before I zoom in. And if I do zoom in, actually, I guess you can see it just fine as I do. Uh, but nonetheless, um, so your spike certainly in place, uh, new lows on the last 30 minute bar. So anything that's below 311, look for two sided trade in the spike, anything that opens below the spike bearish, there's your 305 retest. So is that going to be a break retest and then turn again, 305, I would watch that for support, considering we are underway in a major reversal back to the upside. So watch out for 305 support tomorrow, possibly. Um, and then to the upside, if we open above 311, negates the spike, you know the deal, should lead to higher in the marketplace, noting that all of the sellers late to the party are wrong. They should close out of the position, adding some buying pressure to Microsoft and essentially anything out there that is currently contending with a spike, okay? So those are my thoughts and levels in Microsoft, F-A-N-G-M-A -A for A-M-Z-N. Getting right through our Fangman stocks, working our way two to go. Amazon, what do we see here? This one's been on a significant pullback anyways. Like this has had two days of solid pullback. Oops, that's wrong. It's one, then two. This is day three. So could it use a little bit of cool off? Yeah, I mean, it could, but remember what it did on the way up, right? So there's nothing saying that has to sort of cool off or go sideways here. Um, but do just be aware that this one has been seeing significant pullback already as compared to something like your Microsoft that we just saw seeing its first red day. So this has already been down three. Uh, we're back down underneath this prior breakout point around 33.35. I would expect chop through this range. We'll see what happens at the support trend line and if it's in play tomorrow, just like everything else or most things rather. We know that a couple didn't have spikes, but Amazon does have a spike. Your level to watch is going to be at 32.91. Opening below and inside the spike, look for two-sided balance to resume. Uh, basically the market's content. If we open above the spike, look for those shorts to be dead wrong, possibly higher. Wouldn't really push my luck, noting that again, this has been more down uh, aggressively compared to other things that we've seen so far. Maybe it's just the back test of that 3335 level and opening below the spike. My focus would really have to be on the support trend line inside of Amazon coming all the way from the low there's your first higher low, we have not interacted yet. So if we do come into it, I would start watching that. And that would keep us above that 3176, which is critical from our weekly perspective, right? We've been talking about this level uh, nonstop, not to beat a dead horse, but there you go. You know, support, 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 neckline of the weekly double bottom. We've broken it. I think it's likely that it holds on any sort of pullbacks here. Again, we also have the support trend line that's defending it as well. Possibility for a higher low above. But even if we do come back down to it, note that the date, or excuse me, not daily, 30 minute 200 SMA green line is also coinciding for potentially super support or some sort of saving grace before cracking that important weekly level. Last but not least, who do we have on the chopping block? None other than NVDA for NVIDIA. What do we see? Let's go back down to a daily. Let's be reasonable here, folks. What do we see on NVIDIA? So we did accomplish the look above and fail. Remember that this is possibly something that Netflix could look similar to. It's very, uh, you know, the, the structure is fairly similar, okay? So it did accomplish the bottom end of the range. That pattern has been fulfilled. The next question is, do we remain in the balance? In which case, fine. You know that we're just being patient. We're waiting for a break up and out or down and out. And we also have the possibility now for some sort of look below and fail. If we do something like that, it's the exact opposite of what happened here, right? So if we put in a, Let's just say that we put in a bar that looks like this, and then the very next day we put in a bar, so next Monday we do this, that's a look below and fail. Our target should be the top end of the range, right? It can happen in both directions, especially noting the significance of the reversal that's been underway. I would say maybe if there's some follow through to the downside on tomorrow's session Friday, and then everyone comes back, you know, realizing that the market's pulled back, maybe we're ready to deploy some more capital. If this sort of setup happens on a Monday, I could easily see that unfolding from a psychological perspective. People are sort of, you know, chalking it up to an end of week pullback. That's fine. Everyone comes back to the screens fresh on Monday and it's like, okay, it's time to get down to business. We've seen some 
pullbacks, what are the stocks that we're going to buy? Maybe Nvidia is one of them, and it gives us that look below and fail setup. Okay, so something to consider. Fairly speculative in terms of just thinking out loud of how people may be feeling about the marketplace. But if you know how other people feel, you can generally make better decisions about what's kind of going on in the marketplace, who's active, who's not, you know, who's getting hurt, who's feeling good about their position, so on and so forth. Anyways, that's besides the point. The numbers that you need to pay attention to here in Nvidia, not so much a spike. There's uh, sure there's a little bit of a spike here. Technically, we did close underneath that. Uh, uh, 273.65, like this would be your spike. Very, very small. I wouldn't really constitute that as a spike, to be quite frank with you. Instead, just focus on your daily balances, okay? So it's still 272 to the downside. If it breaks, maybe it's down here on a stronger move to the downside, the bottom end from this, around 258.77. But again, watch for the look below and fail. I think that might be a sneaky one that tries to pan out here in NVIDIA. If it's back to the top end of the range, I would just be patient in here and then monitor for that next break, probably looking for more confident longs over the 287 on NVIDIA on daily. From the 30 minute perspective, what else can we learn about the uh, price action today? We are, you know, now putting in lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower lows, lower lows, lower lows. So we are in a short term downtrend here. If this is going to break, uh, again, maybe it's your heads up indicator, but I wouldn't try to get overly aggressive inside of the uh, daily range that we're discussing. So again, if this breaks and we start to put in a higher high, wouldn't necessarily be a long signal in my estimation, but I would start to be leaning on and anticipating, okay, what's going to happen at 287 if we're now starting to break that resistance trend line? Just something like a heads up indicator, right? So that's going to wrap up our Fangman companies. If you enjoyed today's video or learned anything new, let me know in the comments section or by giving the video a thumbs up. Don't forget our main channel is linked in the description. And all of that being said, I wish you a green trading week.